What's up, PL Tech Reviews fans, and welcome back for another video on my channel, and also for another video on the Freestyle Journalism channel that we are viewing over on there. In this video, I am going to be giving my reaction to Elon Musk becoming the CEO of Twitter after seeing a whole load of different views on both sides of the argument over the last few months after news broke just a couple of days ago that he had finally finalised the deal to buy Twitter for Forty-four billion dollars. The timeline of which it took Elon Musk to take over Twitter is as following. So in January. Musk began investing in Twitter on the 14th of March. Musk's stake in Twitter reached 9.2%, making him the largest stakeholder in the company. On the 4th of April, Musk disclosed his stake in Twitter and one day later on the 5th Twitter announced that Musk was to join the board of directors. On the 10th of April Musk announced that he wouldn't join the Twitter board but on the 14th of April four days later he offered to buy Twitter for $54.20 per share. On the 15th of April, Twitter adopted a poison pill provision to prevent mask taking over and threatening that it, will be, that it would be triggered if any and so or entity acquired 15% of the company's shares. And on the 21st of April, Musk said he'd garnered commitments of about $46.5 billion in finance for his Twitter takeover. On April the 25th, Twitter accepted. On the 4th of May, Musk secured more than $7 billion in financing and on the 6th of May, promised to quintuple, quintuple Twitter's revenue by 2028. And now, touching on one of the slightly more controversial parts, on the 10th of May, Musk said that he would reverse Twitter's ban on former US President Donald Trump's account. Although there are a lot of people who would actually support that. Although some people will be fully in favour of free speech coming back to the platform, it's important to pause here for a second and to say how this did raise fears which among many activists, such as disabled activists, gay activists, black activists and others. 
many of them are scared that there will be a rise in hate crime because of this, that there will be a rise in homophobic hate crime over Twitter, although a lot of the gay community will have felt that they are not being faced with woke homophobia in some areas and there's also activists who are scared that there will be a rise in racial attacks. On the 12th of May, Twitter announced a hiring freeze, thus pausing Musk's acquisition. And a day later, on the 13th of May, Musk admitted that he was still committed to the deal. On the 26th of May, Twitter shareholders brought a class action lawsuit against Musk. And on the 6th of June, Musk threatened to pull out of the deal altogether if Twitter didn't provide information about bots on the platform. On the 8th of July, Musk moved to terminate his takeover of Twitter, pointing out the issue of fake accounts as his reason. On the 12th of July, Twitter starts to see Musk at Chancery Court in Delaware. In Delaware, and on the 19th of July, the court determined the trial brought on by Twitter against Musk should take place in October. This leads us now to the last few weeks, as on the 4th of October, Musk proposed the completion of a deal to acquire Twitter and on the 28th of October he completed the deal for 44 billion dollars and let's not forget Elon Musk's first tweet after completing the deal. In the days that have followed Elon Musk's takeover his first actions have included to fire four top Twitter executives. It has also been suggested that he plans to change Twitter's super followers feature to subscriptions. That Starlink, Musk's satellite based internet service over at SpaceX, his other child might make its way to Twitter and will help Twitter become available in countries where it's currently hard to access. And another change which, according to the BBC, Mr Musk also wants to bring in is revamping the blue tech. But I will upload more about that in a couple of days as I just want to learn a wee bit more about the fact of what that will include before getting into it. Following on, however, from the fact that activists have also already had fears for a couple of months. Trolls have already started testing the new limits with a tide of slurs and memes already appearing on Twitter all over Twitter. I think it's worth raising the argument that it might be too soon for any of us to form an opinion 
it's important to know the differences between eight speech and freedom of speech that we've heard a lot about over the last weeks, months and years and what the difference is between them as well as what the difference is between speech that attacks or threatens people and that which is intended to insult whether jokingly or abusively and speech where some people just respectively disagree with each other and lay out their reasons for doing so. But nonetheless, policing of proper hate speech is still going to be something that much will still have to deal with. And in the times that we are living in, it's going to be an uphill battle. According to an article on Bloomberg, Musk sent out a tweet saying that Twitter will form a content moderation council which will include widely diverse viewpoints and no changes have so far been made to Twitter's hateful conduct or Twitter rules at the minute, although that could be updated later. So while there might be a risk of some hate speech rising, and of course proper hate speech against all communities should absolutely be stomped out, we can't pretend that no hate speech existed before Elon Musk became CEO of Twitter. I know for a fact that I have seen disabled people facing actual disabled, actual disability hate crime before all of this was before all of this happened and there have also been cases where women who don't want to share a bathroom, sports teams or to have trans women or biological men looking after them, receiving rape and death threats who when reported don't have their accounts completely completely taken off them and who are only suspended for a couple of days. Hear me out here. I feel absolutely awful for all of the people with underlying health and who have suffered or lost family members because of COVID throughout the pandemic. However, I think there is a point in asking how do you differentiate between people with bad underlying health and those who do not? Because yes, I am one of the disabled people who is not always sick. And furthermore, the physically disabled people with good underlining health give in to the pressures put on to them that they shouldn't go out. How many disabled rights do we risk losing? On another note, though there has been other discussions about what language you can include in the arts, be that with songs, with jokes, with films, etc. And what you can get away with without sounding capitalist. And a recent example of this has been with the Big Time Rush song that is over 10 years old, 
Come on and look at me here when all of the videos I have uploaded, I have said that I am paralysed and I will happily upload a of videos to prove that that is the case. I can and will say that that will 100% always be the case because as it is the only experience I have a memory. I have the memory of living though I know I wasn't always disabled. I actually do not want to change it. If someone came over to me and said that they didn't think my life was worth living, I would try to convince them how it isn't actually that bad. If someone showed me actual hate, I would report it. And if someone hypothetically said that all paralysed people should be locked away or killed, I would be the first in making sure that that person should be severely challenged or stopped. But there is absolutely nothing wrong with someone saying that they are paralysed with fear, paralysed in love, tongue-tied because they don't know what to say, or brain dead because they can't believe what has happened or aboard, which, which in themselves are a figure of speech. So in conclusion, although Elon Musk becoming CEO of Twitter might mean a return to hate speech, I think it's important that we don't make any judgments for at least a wee while. And for this reason, I think Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter makes it a mixed blessing that helps us to fight hate speech while equally allowing freedom of speech to return to the platform.